We have looked at how databases and spreadsheets can be used to both present and also process information. Now we're looking at how three new types of software, word processes, desktop publishing and presentation software can be used just to present information. Despite the word processor in word processor, none of these are really designed for processing data. They're there to present the information once it has been processed, maybe by a spreadsheet, maybe by a database. So first of all, let's look at word processors. So these are primarily designed for writing text documents, so word being text in this case. So mostly just for written text, but we can add some formatting and change colors and add in shapes and so on. Most modern word processors like Microsoft Word allow us to sort of add formatting. By this I mean you know different fonts and also uh, organizing sections and headings and so on. And this is Microsoft Word, right? We've got different colors, highlighters, that is what I mean by formatting, and bullet points and so on. And we can, as you'll know, have other objects inside a Word document, things like tables and graphs and pictures. Although the software is not necessarily designed for this. If you go back 25 years, Word processors were not designed for tables and graphs and pictures. So it, you can use them, but it's not necessarily the main purpose of the software, which is for writing long bits of text. So the target audience is really important. If we were presenting it to a young child who can't read, or someone who doesn't speak English, or someone who doesn't tend to read much, then having a long Word document is not going to be the most effective medium for presenting our information. So let's evaluate it. And these evaluations are more based on the tool itself as opposed to how we can present it. So the tool itself, we can, if we are wanting to write text, we can write it and edit it very easily, as you'll know from your own experiences, no doubt. A text document is very easy to, to manage, usually. And the formatting is built in. We can add colors and change fonts and so on in most software and almost all software, really. And we can, if you want to, add in different objects like tables, like images, and so on. This can be quite good if we're trying to break up a big body of text. However, because word processes are designed primarily just for text, it can be hard to create what you might consider visually appealing documents. It's rare you'll see a Word document which is standing out to you particularly. Usually it's just text, maybe some colours if you are lucky. It's hard to make anything too visually appealing. And on a similar theme, the documents you create do not always look massively professional, especially in terms of a creative aspect, right? They're not if you try and make something really colourful and creative in Microsoft Word, it's not going to be as professional as if you used a desktop publishing tool, for example. And also, even if you are writing, say, a book in Microsoft Word, or maybe writing a scientific paper, most professionals would not necessarily use a normal word processor to do this. There are other software, like typesetting software, which makes the documents look a bit more professional. But it's not too bad for just text. I mentioned desktop publishing, so let's talk about that now. It's often shortened to just DTP. So if you see DTP, it means desktop publishing. So this is more, I would say, specialist software. You probably have Microsoft Word or some word processor on your computer. You probably, you may not have desktop publishing because it's quite specialist. It's designed for your more creative tasks. Nothing too fancy because they're mostly just there to combine text with other objects like images. So Microsoft Word can combine text and images, but it's much more focused on the text, whereas DTP software is much more focused on how the images and other objects interact with your text. So this is Microsoft Publisher. It's very similar, especially looking-wise, very similar to Microsoft Word, but it's much more there for your design and the layout and so on. So it can be used to create magazines and leaflets and maybe more documents which are more reliant on the visual aspect. So if we are wanting to present our information in a very eye-catching way, DTP software is perhaps more appropriate than Microsoft Word because Microsoft Word is more about, I suppose, the substance and less about how it looks. So let's evaluate DTP because that's a very common exam question, evaluation of course. So what's good is that in particular, showing images alongside text can be done in a very professional, very organized way. And to help us do this, there are usually lots of templates available, a template being a sort of the general outline, and then you add in your own specific content. 
Now, spreadsheets and word processors and databases also have templates, but they're not as I would say necessary because it's not easy to create a professional looking document. It's useful to have some basic template to start off with. And because they are designed for the more creative applications, the document you create may well be more visually appealing than one created by a word processor, which is designed really for the text, not so much for the images. However, because I suppose creating a visually appealing document is harder than just writing text, they can be harder to use than a word processor. You may have to do some training as always to learn how to use them. And also this is less of an issue nowadays in all honesty, but in the past in particular, the file formats of different publishing software were not compatible with each other. Thankfully a word processor, you're just typing text mostly. So the file formats of different processors were fairly interchangeable, but because publishing software is more complex, arguably, there was less compatibility. So you might create a file in Microsoft Publisher and then try and use it in a different publishing software and it wouldn't work. Nowadays, it's a little bit better because you might have a, so a file format means like a, a .pub file, if it's a publishing document for Microsoft Publisher. Nowadays, it's a little bit more compatible, but that is still an issue which does remain to some extent. And our final type of software to look at is what I'm using right now, presentation software. So they're designed to make slideshows. A slideshow is a series of images or slides which may have text and images on them. So it's quite meta because that's exactly what I'm doing right now. So I've got my slide, if I drag it across, I've got my slide, you can see it. Uh, I've got a series of slides for what I've just gone through. So these are really effectively images which may have text and images on them. And I'll have transitions between my slides. So you can see if I go, this is Microsoft PowerPoint, if I go to transitions tab at the top, I can change the transitions and so on. It makes it a little bit more dynamic than maybe just a static series of images. I can also add animations between objects on my slides. So here I've got, you can see, different animations for the objects here. It makes it again, hopefully, a little bit less boring. And if I want to control it, let's go back to my actual slideshow. If I want to control it, I can use a timer if I want to. I mean, here I'm just using my keyboard to click through my animations, but you can also use a clicker. Your teacher may use one of these to go between slides. So presentations, mostly there for slightly more, maybe I'm, I'm the exception, maybe slightly more visually appealing image-based slides, which are related to each other. Presentation software is really good because we can also talk alongside our slides. Most people do not just go through a slideshow without talking over it. If you had, say, a Word document or a, a publishing document, you can talk alongside it, but I mean, it's not really designed for that purpose. It's designed to be consumed on its own. A slideshow usually needs someone to talk through it as well. Let's evaluate presentation software then. So what is good is that we can have multiple slides and having multiple slides means that we can display on each slide similar, you know, connected, but not the same information. So we can have different information on each slide, like I do, but it's on the same theme, right? We're looking at different software, they're all on the same theme. But it's a good way of separating our information in logical units. What's also good is that usually there are many different templates provided. I'm using a template here, which I've just changed a little bit. I've changed the colors, but this kind of strip here is a template. I can change my templates if I want to. Um, I just chose this one fairly arbitrarily, but I can change it. That's useful because I can really go between different templates and they are most and most look fairly professional. Let's go back to what I was. That's better than me doing it by hand because the one I make may not be as good. So you can make professional slideshows, but the issue is, as you will know if you've seen a class presentation maybe, is that if you add too many features, like transitions, like animations, it can make it look quite unprofessional. It can drag out quite a lot. If I put a crazy transition on, it's a bit over dramatic and doesn't quite fit for purpose. So keeping it simple is often better. It's easy, it's quite tempting to make it a bit too complicated. And finally, if you have loads of text, as I often do, and many different objects and pictures and so on on one slide, it can clutter them, which can make things a little bit more confusing than say a Word document, which is a little bit more simple. So that is more about your use of the software, but it's still a way to evaluate it.